when the Prophet ﷺ was asked to deliver the message openly to a certain group of people, the people of Quraysh and the Ashira and you know the, the clan of the Prophet ﷺ, he got hold of the top of the lot and he gathered them at Safa. And he asked them the question we spoke about yesterday where he says, if I were to tell you that there, there is an army behind me, this side of the mountain that you cannot see, and that they are ready to attack you, would you believe it? And they said, yes, we would believe it. We've never known you to have lied, not even once. Subhanallah. And then what happened? He says, well, I'm warning you of a severe punishment that will come to those who disobey. And you worship Allah alone and so on. And Abu Lahab gets up and he says, Tabban laka, ya Muhammad. Ali hadha jama'atana. A'udhu billah. May Allah safeguard us. You know, it reminds me of when you're young and you're growing up and someone corrects you and you say, who the hell do you think you are? Even my father doesn't tell me this. That's a similar answer. Wallahi, it's a similar answer. You know, people get angry when you correct them. My brother, this is a thing. I, I love you. I respect you. But please, this is a matter I need to talk to you about. Who do you think you are? And why are you telling me? And I don't talk to you ever again. No, my brother, don't be like Abu Lahab. May Allah forgive us. I, it's not that bad, okay? But at the same time, what we mean is it happens that sometimes, especially young children, when they're full of energy and you try and tell them a small thing, look, you know, you need to be respectful or don't do this. They immediately give you an answer. Let's not let that happen to us. May Allah safeguard us. So what he says, destruction be upon you. Tabban lak, woe be upon you, O Muhammad. Is this why you gathered us? You're wasting our time here. We are the leaders. We are the top shots. We own the whole of Mecca, basically. We are the ones whom nobody can tell anything who do you think you are coming to tell us what to do and who to worship and a lot of them thought perhaps he's saying this because he just wants to snatch from them their leadership and their power and authority perhaps their wealth and so on he wants to impress no it was a message of reality so verses were revealed now that was a very big insult imagine allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the most beloved to him who is muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa a mission to deliver a message and when he delivers that message immediately one man gets up and he is related closely to Muhammad وسلم, and he, he swears in public he tries to make a disgrace what happens you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves it never ever up to this day we read the verses of the Quran in that regard do you know that immediately the verses were revealed تَبَّتْ يَدَا أَبِي لَهَبٍ وَتَبَّ مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُ مَالُهُ وَمَا كَسَبٍ سَيَصْلَى نَارًا ذَاتَ لَهَبٍ وَامْرَأَتُهُ حَمَّالَةَ الْحَطَبٍ فِي جِيدِهَا حَبْلٌ مِّن مَّسَدٍ سبحان الله What powerful verses all against Abu Lahab and why were they revealed? I met a man who told me, how can the Quran have an entire surah which is denouncing a man? And I said, what's wrong? The man denounced the messenger. So Allah is showing that that man is also denounced. That's all. So, but how can Allah curse someone? So that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the Quran. If you curse Allah, you are automatically cursed. He doesn't need to curse you. You are cursing yourself. How can you curse your own maker? He made you, he gave you your life. You'd be a fool. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So destruction be upon Abu Lahab. Woe be upon Abu Lahab. Upon both hands of his. Not just one. And so what happened?